Good afternoon, IT specialists and those who are planning to become one soon. My name is Sergey Kromchenko. I am a QA engineer, lead manager, or a senior engineering manager of SDET in the past. But these days, I'm helping people just like you to learn more about coding, about a QA, or how to become a QA engineer from scratch. But today, I'm going to answer one of your questions from the YouTube, which sounded like, what did you wish you knew when you started your career? And this question will actually be helpful for those who are starting right now or for those who have already started but facing some issues at the job or just want to become better engineers. So let's get directly into it. All right, first and the most important one probably, you will get questions that you have no answers to and that is totally okay not to know the answer. As the QA engineer or as an any type of engineer, you need to be exact when you give an answer. So if you know probably something or you know an approximate answer, don't say anything. Say, hey, let me get back to you in a bit or let me research it. You know, you need to find a confidence in yourself to say that I will find an answer for you, but I do not have it at this moment and it's totally fine. I'll give you an example. Myself, when I just started, when I had about a year of experience, I started working for, for a huge corporation. And during my second week at that job, they did ask me to join a call with a, with a company that was paying us multi-million dollar contract on a monthly basis. So pretty much every month they would pay us more than a million dollars. And that company asked me a question during my second week of working. And they said, hey, uh, when are you guys planning to write automation for this function, new functionality? Because we're facing a lot of issues there. And as you can imagine, I had a lot of pressure on myself. So what I did, I said, give me, a, hold on a second, give me about a week. I, I'm going to talk to my senior engineers or senior SDATs, and we're going to bring you an estimate during our next call. So that's exactly how I figured the situation out. So I did not know an answer. I had a lot of pressure on myself. So I said, well, let me do the research. Let me find the exact digit and then I'll get back to you guys next week. So please make sure to find a confidence in yourself whenever you get the question that you don't know answer to, to say, you know what, let me get back to you in a bit. It might be a day, it might be a week, it might be a, an hour, but you're gonna know better the amount of time you need for that answer. Second, when you write bug reports, it's okay to say that, oh, this button does not work. It's okay, but developers would expect you guys to give them more details. Developers would ask you guys to tell them why it does not work or where exactly it does not work in this button. So how do you do that? Well, thing number one, don't forget to, that if you are testing on a web browser, you can open developer tools. You can open, uh, in a Chrome, there would be a right click and then inspect. And then you'd see multiple tabs. If you go to the network tab, you will see a list of API calls that goes inside and outside of the browser. So you need to open it, you need to click that button and see if there is anything red to see if the API is failing. If it is failing, you take a screenshot of that API with that button and you send it to developer and you say that, hey, API failure upon click of this button. In this way, you will show how professional you are to every single person, uh, to every developer who's going to take a look at the ticket because you did not say that, oh, it just doesn't work, I don't know why. You went ahead, you debugged, you debugged it. You started to dig into an issue and you found out that, oh, actually there's an API failure and that's why the button does not work. Also, you can, if, the, if an API is not failing, you can click on a console tab in the, in the developer tools. When you do that, you might see JavaScript errors on a front end when you're clicking that button. Don't forget to do that as well, as well. And if you see something red, if you see a lot of code, when you press or when you click the button, you see a lot of code running or showing up in a red color, don't forget to take a screenshot or even record a video and attach it to your bug report. Third one, when you're talking about an issue or when you're filing a bug report, developers are those people who are going to take a look at it first most of the time and they will probably ask you follow-up questions if you do not give them enough information. For example, knowing the environment is very important. Some companies will have multiple environments. 
some companies will have, well, most companies should have versioning system set up. Uh, and in that system, you will know that, okay, today I am testing this version of the application on this environment. So when you file your bug reports, specify that, hey, test it in a QA environment. And the application version is 4.0.2 and found this bug report. And also, when we're talking about environment, don't forget that you need to specify the browser. And you, well, you need to double check if the issue is reproducible in other browsers, because if it's not, it's a compatibility issue. It's a browser specific issue. It's not a general issue that you don't even have to specify browser because it's everywhere. So don't forget to check number one, environment, number two, version, and number three, browser, or, uh, or it would be the mobile, um, when we're testing in the mobile, that would be operation system itself. Is it Android or iOS? The most painful point and point number four, you will miss the bugs. As a QA engineer, it is your main job to find issues, to find bugs, but you will definitely miss, miss the bug. One, two, three, ten. It depends. The more years experience you have, the more you will miss. And it is okay. The main point here is that you need to find answer to the question, how could I prevent, how can I prevent it next time? So this issue or any other type of issue will not appear or that it would be caught by you, by you or your test automation core code before, uh, before it goes to production. From my own experience, I did miss quite a few very important issues. I did had a conversations with managers when I was a QA engineer and I did find a way to prevent them in the future. As simple as that. So just remember that it is going to be very painful at the beginning as it is your job and you will think, oh shoot, I didn't do my job very well. Maybe I'm not a good engineer. Maybe I, it's not my thing. You know what? It is your thing, but don't give up. The main thing, once again, make sure to prevent these types of issues in the future. Now the last one, the fifth one, and probably also one of the most important ones. Don't be afraid talking to developers and product owners and project managers, even a CTO or CEO, they are people. You are all working as one team. It's not like you are a QA engineer and you're just doing your job and everyone else is doing important things and you're doing not important thing. That's completely not true. What is true is you're all working as one team together and you're all striving and you all have a one goal to make your company successful, to release successful and a, a relatively bug-free products that customers will love. The customer will love products, not bugs. Anyways, it is goal of your team and everyone is equal. So don't be afraid to, uh, number one, answer the questions that you don't have answer to in a way that, you know what, let me ask someone else. Let me talk to the product owner. He better knows the product. Let me talk to the product manager because he, he knows more about uh, our project overall. You are a quality assurance engineer. You are not a god. So don't be afraid to ask questions and talk to them as you guys are all equal. Whoa, that was cool. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If I would see it before I started my nine years of experience as the QA engineer, I would be amazed and I would be much faster at my job. I would be a much better engineer. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to give me the big fat thumb up, hit the subscribe button below and join our Instagram and Telegram communities, links to which you can find in the description below this video. Also, if you have any questions to me, feel free to send the message directly under this video in the comment section or you can reach me out at codmify.com. I'll see you next time.